Okay, so thanks so, so much for listening to the recording, um, or if some of you jump on, yay! Um, so tonight I have Heather Burns with us, and she is awesome, and I'm really excited for you to hear her story, and I know that it's just going to really um, resonate with so many of you because she's, you know, just an awesome, awesome person that I, I really love following on Facebook. I really love the way that she works her business, and she has a great following, and she's really, really good at interacting with other people and really being adding value and being interesting as well as being interested um, in other other people. So um, Heather has been a coach for 13 months. Um, she was able to quit her full-time job after 10 months of being a coach, which is so freaking cool. Um, and she is a mama. And um, how old is Nico now? Didn't he just turn two? Uh, 16 months. Yeah. 16. Slow oh. down, girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Were you just at a birthday party? I don't know. <laughs> my, well, my, yeah, my niece has just turned, one of my niece just turned three, so, but yeah, he's. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Oh, hey, Angela. Hi. Hi, girl. So I'm just, um, oh, who is that little muffin? Oh, I'm babysitting. This is Allie. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> a little burrito over there. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, for the recording sake, was introducing um, Heather, but I'll just go ahead and, and tell you this is, um, she's from um, my hometown, and um, so she um, has just a really awesome story in the, that she was able to um, quit her job after 10 months and um, has a 16-month-old son and um, was able to just work this business from home, and she's really good at what she does, and I asked her what her um, proudest moment is and she said when she was able to quit her job and stay home with her baby which is just so awesome and he's adorable and I freaking love looking at your pictures of it be so cute oh thank you thank you well thank you so much for that warm introduction that's so nice I'm just honored to be here and share my story um I do I just love sharing this business opportunity with people I was actually invited to the business like four years ago and I saw my, my coach like doing it and I just thought it looked not fun. You know, I was just like, Oh, she posts these pictures of like people and I would never post a picture of my half naked body and you know, all these things. But fast forward, you know, three, four years after that, it was like, Oh my gosh, there's a business opportunity. I was able to lose all of my baby weight plus some, um, I gained about 60 pounds with him. So long story short, beach body has changed my life. So I'll tell you a little bit about my story. So that's, kind of how I got into it. Um, so I had done a challenge group like four years prior, did Shakeology, liked it, thought it was expensive, quit it, you know, got, went on my cruise with my boyfriend at the time, now husband, um, and then never did Beachbody again. And like I said, she invited me to the coach opportunity and I just kind of laughed at her. I had a really good job. Uh, I was making really great money. I just moved to Dallas, Texas at the time. It was in this great relationship with this guy, you know. So I was just like, no thanks. Um, I don't have time for anything else. Well, then I had my son. I gained about 60 pounds with him. And I literally, um, I've struggled with weight my whole life, probably like most women. Um, you know, I've been a size, I don't know, I think the biggest I've ever been was a size 10 and the smallest I've been was a size two. So I've kind of been the skinny fat. I've been the overweight for definitely for, for my size, but then I had this baby gained all this weight and more than anything, I really just wanted to get healthy. Um, my mind shift completely changed about pretty much everything in my life after I had him, but definitely the health I wanted to get healthy. And so I reached back out to this girl, my girlfriend that I knew, and I'm like, Hey, I need to lose this baby weight. How, like what programs are good? Can I do that Shakeology stuff again? And pretty much the rest is history. So I've 21 day fix was just launching, got on it. Oh my gosh. Best program ever. I think for anybody, but especially a postpartum mom, like it's just, it's just doable. 30 minutes. The every, You all know probably what it is. So amazing. Um, I had amazing results and I just, I don't know why I shared like the, literally the day that I got it, I shared on Facebook that I was doing it and I really had no intentions of doing the coaching really. But I thought if I signed up as a discount coach because I was on maternity leave, and I Googled, how do you, how do you buy psychology cheap? You know, and the only thing I could figure out every answer point is so you have to be a discount coach. Mm -hmm. I wasn't one that went on eBay. Cause I just think that seems weird to buy like something you consume off of eBay, but that's just me. Uh, I know so many people do it. Uh, but so I signed up as a discount coach, told my friend, I don't want to coach. 
I, you know, but I, I want to save some money. Again, I had great results, posted it about it, and then all of a sudden, people started asking me. And then I think I asked, I asked my girlfriend, hey, somebody's interested, like, how do I do this? And then I got a paycheck. And then I was like, wait, what? We have paid for this? And then um, my maternity leave was like really starting to close in. And I have been a career woman my whole life. Um, love to work, workaholic. April and I actually worked at Texas Roadhouse together. I had pulled doubles all the time. Like, I, you know, it was just like I was, I used to work seven days a week. That was just me. I've worked since I was 15. Um, I've been really successful in my corporate career, climbing the corporate ladder. Um, never in a million years wanted to be a stay at home mom. I actually didn't even know that I wanted to be a mom. Um, and so, um, having that little boy totally changed my world. Like I said, um, my priorities changed. I didn't really just want to be skinny. I didn't care about the size of my pants. I wanted to be healthy. Um, and then the business side, I knew my girlfriend was a full-time coach and she seemed to make good money, you know, and I panicked, literally just panicked whenever I was about to go back from maternity leave. And for about two weeks straight, I cried every single day. I could cry now because I just remember laying in my bed thinking, I can't do this. I can't go back to work. What am I going to do? So I started Googling work from home jobs. Like, what can I do? And they all seem shady or you make minimum wage and you can't go from, you know, making good money to making minimum wage. So I kind of started asking a little bit more questions about the business and then just started really educating myself on truly what is network marketing? How does it work? Is it legit? Is it shady? You know, all that stuff. And from then on, I just ran with it. I knew Beachbody was my answer to quit my job. I didn't know how long it was going to take. I just knew that if I gave it my all, I could make this work. And luckily I have a super supportive husband, um, who, you know, I, he's also very business minded. And so I shared some of like the compensation structure and kind of showed him how in your first year you really don't make much. Um, but like over time, look at like what you can do and I'm going to retire you. We're going to like, you know, this is going to be amazing. And so he really like understood the concept. He really got it and he has been supportive since day one. So I did have to go back to work. Um, and I cried every day and actually my work situation when I went back to work from maternity leave was actually worse than before. And I had a different manager. It was just not a good situation. Um, and I really used that as my, to fuel my fire, um, more so than anything. So not only did I not want to work, but then I was in this really crappy work situation and I, every time my manager ticked me off. I just was like, I'm inviting 10 more people, you know, like going at it, like screw you woman. I'm going to make this work. So over 10 months I did, I worked in the morning before I actually started my job at, um, nine. Cause I worked for the, actually for Dallas, um, market. And so I had like from, I usually try to do from like seven to nine, I worked my business. And then at night when Nico went home, went to sleep, I would, um, I would work my business. So I can't say that it, I mean, I was a brand new mom. I had a full-time, very demanding, um, very competitive like sales job that was very metrics driven. So you either do or you don't. So your numbers prove it's kind of like beach body in the sense that either you make money or you don't like, you know what, what you did because your paycheck is a direct reflection of it. So I had two of those kind of a jobs, you know, in the same time and a brand new mom. But, um, I just knew in my heart of hearts that beach body was my answer. And not only that, but like how much it's so gratifying to help other women find, you know, find themselves again. And I always say like health is so much more than a physical, you know, physical thing. It's a mental, emotional. And when you surround yourself like pe with people like April, like, I mean, hello, it's just like positive Pollyanna here. Like, you know what I mean? It just changes your life. It's not like we all have perfect lives, but we choose to focus on the good stuff and, you know, always find the silver lining in life and all of those things. And who doesn't need more friends like that? So I could go on and on about how Beachbody has changed my life, you know, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, um, spiritually, like all, just all of the things that, you know, health is such a, is, it's, it all goes together. And it's, and I love Beachbody for that reason, because it's not really a focus just on your physical. There's it, we, you know, the, the company even ties in all those other things. And then obviously, depending on what team you are on, like, you know, usually 
almost everyone, I would say, it, it's, a, it's a whole mind, body, and soul thing, which I love. So it doesn't just take care of one bucket. It takes care of all your buckets. Um, so in 10 months, yes, I quit my job in January, which is hands down, it's like the best thing ever. I actually um, resigned to my VP because um, I had been in leadership roles. So I didn't even resign to my manager at the time, like, because I used to do her job, but she, like, tried to talk me out of it. She was like, what can I do? How can I get you to stay? Like... And I was just like, no, uh -uh. like I am not, thank you, but no thank you. Um, and so it was, it was scary. I actually did take a pay cut, um, a pretty hefty one whenever I quit, but I knew that I needed to take that leap of faith to make this work. And so I went crazy in January 24th this year, like, you know, and it's gone up and down since then, but, um, you know, I've just been consistent. And so I do get to stay home with Nico and it's been amazing. Um, it's just been life changing. So I think my biggest thing is I want other people to know it's possible because I was on the outside looking in and thinking, how do these people make this work? How do these people live this life by design? I watched April quit her job and was like, go girl, you know, like I couldn't wait to do that. And I was like right on the tail of that. You know, it was like, I want to do that so bad. And if somebody else is doing it, why can't I do it? Um, and so I think a lot of times this will kind of tie into so my top fives, April asked me to share, like, what are my top five tips for a coach? Um, whether you're a brand new coach or whether you have been doing this for three years, you know, um, I think these still really apply. Because I know for me, when I was a coach in the beginning, these still would apply. And to me today, these still apply. So I hope in some way they help you. So my number one um, is know your why like you know your name. Um, if you don't have a firm why you were doing this. And I always am sure you've heard this saying like your why should make you cry. Like if your why does not hit you to the core and pull at your heartstrings, um, I can say you probably won't last because why would you keep doing this? Um, there are days this business is so easy, like ridiculously easy. And people are like coming to you and like asking you, what are you doing? You know, I just got a message today. Hey, tell me about that meal plan. I'm like, ah, you know, and then there are days where you are like, where do I find my five people to form my five people to invite? Who am I going to follow up with? You know, who am I going to invite to the coaching opportunity? Um, and you just don't know where these people are going to come from you find them when you know your why, you know, you, you just, you figure out another way to make it work. And so if you know, my why was my son, I desperately wanted to quit my job so that I could be present in his life and not hand him over to a nanny and not pay somebody else to watch him for goodness sakes. Um, and so that I didn't have to miss the milestones. It broke my heart when I would walk by my nanny and she was cuddling with my son. Like I would literally get like angry and walk upstairs and just cry because I actually got to work from home um, for my, this, when I returned from work, which was a huge blessing too, but it's also not easy to hear your son cry and, you know, talk and laugh when you're like upstairs working this horrible job. But anyways, um, so know your why. And if you don't have a why that like really means, and it's got to be more than just help people get healthy, you know, it's, definitely gotta be more. I will say over time, my why has transitioned. I already, I, I got my why. So my why I've already succeeded in that I get to stay home with him. Um, now my why is to give other moms this opportunity. Like, I am so passionate about, I'm in so many mommy groups and these women are posting just the feelings that I posted. They're devastated that they have to leave their kids, you know, in daycare or, you know, they have to go back to work. And so I want other women to know you don't have to be a victim, you know, of your nine to five. Well, for me, it was like 50, 60 hours a week. Um, so know your why, like, you know, your name, it's gotta be like, who you are. And at the end of the day, when you, the going gets tough and you want to go to sleep and you don't want to get up early and you just want to throw in the towel, you have to have a why that makes you keep pushing. So that's number one. Number two. So I don't know if these are necessarily in order, but, um, never stop posting on social media. Even if you have a bad day, a bad week, a bad month, we all have bad days. We all have bad weeks and we all have bad months. You're going to have days where you probably, I'm going to be honest, you don't do your power of threes. You don't invite, 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 and you don't, maybe you don't even work out or drink your shake or whatever. Um, although I, 
I really have a hard time going without Shakeology, even if I'm in a funk, like it makes me happier. But it's not, I'm not saying be fake. And I'm not saying like, you know, post you did a workout if you didn't do a workout, but you're, you, your social media is what works for you when you don't even have to work. Even when you're like, we don't just sit at our computers all day. Like you can post and walk away. And that's something I've learned over time too, because as a brand new coach, I used to literally just like sit at my computer and I'd have my phone, like, blah, 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 blah. like I feel like now that I've learned how this a, a little better, it's a little more work-life balance, or should I say social media and like life balance? Um, Cause you can be stuck to your computer all day long, but you don't have to be or your phone. Um, but never stop posting on whatever social media outlet you have. I've had bad days. I've had bad weeks and bad months where I seriously was like, wanted to quit. But I thought in the back of my head, don't let anyone else know that, you know, don't let anyone else know that you're about to throw in the towel. Cause what if you change your mind? And I changed my mind every single time because I knew my why and I knew Beachbody was my outlet. So don't stop posting. Um, and then my other one, this is huge and I still struggle with this. And I think we all do. Don't compare yourself to other coaches. Wow. 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 Um, it is so easy to compare yourself to other coaches and you know, I can look at someone that's been in the business for 13 months. Like I have, and, um, I can name someone right now. Like I know she's like, she, I think she just got seven star or five, whatever. And so I, here, I know that because I follow her. Now I am inspired by her. So that's part of the reason. And the other part, like that, the devil is on the other shoulder. Like you're not good enough. Why are you not there? You know? And then I think, but I have a son, you know, and I have given up some of my time with him. So I can be with him. Like I'm getting to do what I want to do. You can also compare yourself to a Melanie Mitro or a Lindsay Matway or, you know, anyone else that's in the top 10 and then you have to remind yourself, like, how long have they been in the business? Like, be realistic with yourself. Don't compare yourself to other coaches. Even the coaches on your team, you know, sometimes they might do better than you one month or whatever. But and I think that comes back to personal development. When you're confident in who you are and you know why you're doing this, what everyone else is doing doesn't really matter. You want to cheer on other people, it's great, but you don't want to take don't let their joy like steal your thunder too, you know, um, or don't let their good stuff, uh, ruin your, ruin yours. So feel free to unfollow people. You don't have to unfriend them. Just unfollow them. I have unfollowed so many coaches. Um, I unfollow new coaches sometimes because I'm just like, Oh my gosh, please stop posting the, like, um, you know, the stock photos of 21 day fix. Like, but then I also unfollowed like really good top coaches because I, it was, it was, um, what's the word? It was just, it was a negative for me. Like it was just like this, this ugh, I was just like comparing myself. So I'm full of people, you know, and then you go stalk them every once in a while. So you're like, Oh, I wonder where they are. I wonder, wonder what posts they've done, you know? Um, and hopefully you learn something from it. So then the other one is, I think, um, there's kind of a whole bunch of little, I'm a very much, uh, I like quotes and saying, stuff, but turn your mess into a message and be unapologetically you get comfortable getting uncomfortable and allow yourself to be vulnerable. And I'll kind of go back over those. So turn your mess into a message. I think so. My coach is incredible and she has a horrible story. Like really, um, her parents both passed away when she was young. She was, um, it's just her brother was murdered. I mean, she has a, she's a really sad story. And I kept thinking she's got such a good good story to share. Like, you know, why, like, I don't have that. Like, you know, I, if you look at my life, I'm thinking, gosh, like I've, I've had a pretty good life, but we all have a mess. Like there's, whether it's an internal battle, whether it's relationships, whether it's job, there's, there's, we all have dirty things that we don't really want people to know, but the quicker you get more comfortable and confident with who you are and what your mission is as a coach, the easier you're able to share that mess in a way to help people. And so get comfortable getting uncomfortable. Like your post that you share um, should be inspiring in a way where you can take the negative in your life and turn it into a positive. And I really don't think, you know, I see the selfie and I post workout selfies. I post Shakeology selfies too, you know, but I think the ones you get the most traction on are the ones that you 
open up and allow yourself to be a little bit vulnerable and the ones that you're just, you kind of get that gut feeling like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm sharing this, but I'm going to share it. And then it just seems like the messages that you, then the conversations you have with people are so much more in depth. It's so much more than what workout are you doing? What meal plan? What's that Shakeology stuff? It's, it's so much more in depth. And that's truly what we're here for. I personally, like my mission is to be a light to others and to let Jesus's love and light shine through me. So my team is Team Radiance and I will always say, let it shine. Like let it shine. It is Jesus. And that's for me, you know, that's my personal mission. And so for me, a lot of that is more of my like, like the things that are deep inside of me. It's so much more than physical. Um, and so I share those things. And those are some things that other people will be like, oof, she said that? Or like, oh my gosh, she shared that? But that is when people can relate to you because we all have a mess. And that's what this business is about, attracting the people that can relate to you, that you can inspire to be a better person. And you know what? At the end of the day, it might not be them buying a challenge pack. So what? If you've helped them in another way, you are still doing something life-changing for somebody else. And so I would encourage you, get comfortable getting uncomfortable, turn your mess into a message and allow yourself to be vulnerable, to share the things that only you and your best friends might know. Um, and always turn it into a positive. So don't just like go out there and share your dirty mess, but like turn it into a positive, life-changing, hopefully um, learning experience for you that hopefully can help somebody else. And then the last thing, don't so this is number five, don't overcomplicate this business. Seriously, when I get new coaches, you know, and I'm doing the onboarding and their GSR, like at the end of the day, this business is so simple. It comes down to the three vital behaviors. You know, I think everybody's always looking for the next best thing and like, what's the next thing I can do? Where can I find more people? And how do I use Instagram or start a blog or do this or do that and do this? Like at the end of the day, yes, you need, you need some kind of an outlet to find people, but it all comes down to you being consistent with the three vital behaviors. It's inviting. And I wish inviting was instead, it was build relationships, build relationships, invite. I wish it was worded that way instead because it's not, I think, because I know as a new coach, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to just be like, I want to invite you to my challenge group. Like, no, that's not, that's not what it is. So always be building relationships with people. Always be forming and talking to new people. And when the time is right, you bring in Beachbody. A lot of the times if you're consistent on Facebook, they will bring up Beachbody and you don't even have to bring up each body. Um, then obviously being proof the product works doesn't mean you have to have a six pack. It just means that you have to be working toward being healthy, mind, body, and soul. And then last personal development. Oh my gosh. I can't even like say enough how important personal development is. And I know so many coaches don't do it. And I can guarantee you the coaches that don't do it are the ones that quit. Um, you know, it's just, again, it goes all together. It's the mind, body, and soul. It's not just work out and drink your psychology. Like that's part of the health. The other health is your mental and emotional, and that's going to last you way longer than the physical. So when you get the one area right, everything else just falls into place. So don't overcomplicate it. This business is so simple. It's just being consistent. And then on top of all of that, all of those five things, I highly encourage you to give it one year. Don't give up before 12 months. Don't. And I can guarantee you along the way, you're going to want to. Yep. I wanted to. And I can honestly tell you, even since I quit my job, I've, I've had the thought, is this, is this right for me? Like, is this still, is am I still going to keep growing and get better? And give it one year. I just hit my one year. And this business will change your life. If you are consistent with it for one year, it's just a no brainer. Like it's a no brainer. So that is my spiel. That's my story. I would, I mean, if you have any questions, I'd love to answer anything, but I hope that helps. I love that. That was so good. And I'm, I love, love, love. And I know there's a lot of co um, coaches that are going to listen to this and just really, really, you know, understand and, and, re and just relate to your story. So I, that's why I really wanted to, to get you on it. And it's just so cool to see, you know, how it doesn't matter if you, like you come from a very business sales background. I had no business, no sales. I was very like, 
I was an exercise physiologist. I was basically one-on-one -on -one asking you questions. I gave you exercises to do, or I was a boot camp instructor. I had no knowledge of business. You know, I still am not very good at the business side. I'm still like, oops, oops, I was supposed to do that, you know? <laughs> so I just, I just love giving other people different backgrounds and examples. It doesn't matter where you came from or what you did before consistency and just the three vital behaviors every day is all it takes. And I just, I just love it. I loved your five tips too. Um, so good. Um, and I wanted to also say something that I, I actually remember I read one of your blogs one time about how you unfollowed somebody. Um, and I totally, I, I totally agree with some of that stuff. There's a couple people that, you know, there's just sometimes people that you just compare yourself to, whether it be fitness side, I wish I had her legs or, you know, her life just seems so perfect. And what we just really need to realize is you, people choose what they put out there on social media. And that's why we look like we are super positive. And for the most part, we are. But like you said, we still have bad days, but there's no reason, you know, to put your bad juju out there. So um, I love the part about if somebody is like bothering you, you're getting, you're being obsessed over it, you're checking them every day or, you know, whatever, unfollow them, let them go because that's, that's no, no good to you. There's, that's just negativity. Um, but one thing I actually really love following you for is I love to see how you do things and you ask questions and get people involved. And every time somebody is commenting, you're always commenting back, which is awesome because then it gets back into your newsfeed. And, um, you know, it's just so cool to see how much your interaction is with other people because that shows that you take that time to get to know people and build relationships. So I just wanted to tell you that's something that I've always admired about you. I just love that. Um, and the give it a year is so great. And I think that I, I tell people a lot, you know, if you, if you don't like it, I mean, you really can quit anytime. So there's what's there to lose. But I really kind of like, you know, also putting that, but you can't expect a miracle overnight. So, you know, I just had a coach quit this, this week and she was like, I need something that's secure and okay, bless and release them. You can't, you know, you, that it's not for everybody, but, um, I would ask her, so you're not telling, so you're telling me you're not secure. Yeah. That would be my question. Like, so, cause you control this business, you know? Yeah, that's a tough one. It's a tough one when people come up to you and say, I, I'm going to quit coaching. I just like, my heart just sinks. I'm like, oh, but you didn't give it your all. <laughs> like I've watched you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'll do that. I'll, I'll tell them a little bit. And I, and then if they're just excuse, 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 I'm like, okay, well, I'm still your coach if you need anything. And you know, I'm just yeah. over. I'm not going to beg you. I'm not. And so um, but yeah, so let's see who we have. Danielle or wait, Danielle. Yeah, Danielle. DJM, DJM's iPhone. I don't remember who that is. And then a 954 number. Um, anybody on here have any questions for Heather? So I know some of you jumped on late, but is there anything um, that you want to ask her? Um, again, to reiterate, she um, quit her job after 10 months and um, super, super consistent and really good at um, social media and interacting and, and um, building her brand if you want to have, ask any questions. Don't be shy. I don't bite. On a bottle. I wish I knew the um, mystery name and number so I could call them out. But um, <laughs> I don't. So, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm so excited. Did you say you had a, um, a little visual thing? I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. Oh, well, and I can just, it's just, I did like a little thing on Pick Monkey. Um, I'll send it to you so you can. Let me see if I can find it. Oh goodness. Do do do. I um yeah, as you can see on my conversations. <laughs> Where is it? Oh, here it is. I'll send this to you too. It's just my top five tips oh, that I just okay. wrote them out and then so yeah, just to reiterate. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Just send that to me and then I'll yeah. set it up. Um yeah, and thank you so much. I loved hearing your story and um, looking forward to talking to your team story. And 
Happy yes. July. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and they're so excited because actually it's funny, like two weeks ago, one of my girls was like, so what are your tips on Instagram? And I'm like, oh, I'm so glad you asked. I'm like, I'm terrible at Instagram. And I just had a conversation. I was like, we're going to have a guest speaker. So we're really excited to, to learn from you. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for jumping on and sorry yeah. about the confusion. And no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about the time zones and all that jazz. So thanks for having me, girl. No Have a good night. Me too. Bye. Bye.